Mike, speaking of Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, obviously they had the whole big three with LeBron, the whole Mm -hmm. decision on ESPN, that whole thing. When you first saw that, and obviously all those guys went to the Miami Heat, did you expect it to become the trend of the league like it has been now with players joining other players the way it's been? They really, really sort of set the tone for that, didn't it? A couple of, t- you know, it's happened with a few teens, but uh, boy, they really set the tone. And I think it, uh, it it opened the eyes up, I think, of a lot of players to saying, you know what, uh, we can do this. We, we, you know, let's talk to our, our boys here and then let's let's try to get together and, uh, and play together and maybe win a championship. Mind you, we're talking three unbelievable talents and just not them you got to look at the players the Heat surrounded them with. You can't just win with three superstars. you got to have a whole team around you, a good bench, uh, guys in the starting lineup, everyone that's going to be able to help a little bit. And Miami's, uh, the roster, where those three guys were together, I mean, oh, my goodness. Uh, it, it was it was all-star stuff. I mean, you know, the Ray Allens, the Shane Battiers, the Mike Millers, uh, the Posey. I mean, they're just a, a bunch of, a bunch of different players. Speaking of that team, what were your thoughts of LeBron James leaving and going to Cleveland and then winning a title with the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that hasn't won a title? Really, a city hasn't won a title in over over 70 years. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, he, he, it was the perfect storm for them, I think, winning that title. They, they were certainly not the best team in that championship run, but I think when uh, Draymond Green got uh, suspended for that one game, that sort of opened up the floodgates and uh, to take nothing away from Cleveland. They did a great job. Hey, they won. They, they won the championship. You never take anything away from them. But I still think Golden State was a much better team than they were and uh, didn't like him uh, leaving Miami because there was a great vision. I know Pat Riley had this vision of this dynasty. And I think if he would have hung around, uh, he would have put a few more uh, a few more rings on, the, on the, the, his hands. Uh, uh, I don't know where he's going to go now with that, but uh, it, it was it was a shame he left. But we also understood he wanted to get home, and uh, he had his reasons, like all players do in every league. Eventually, they uh, they want to go, maybe go back home if they can. And uh, look what he did for Cleveland. He really uh, put them back on the map when it comes to championships, in particular the NBA. Mike, speaking of LeBron James, you broadcasted LeBron James for a long time when he was with mm-hmm. Miami. What was your favorite thing that you saw in his game? that really just stood out to you the most? Because he does a lot of things extremely when, well. I'll, I'll tell you, yeah, he, he did so much. But it's when he got that look on his face. And I know everyone's seen the, the look in particular against the Boston in the, in the playoffs years ago. But when he wanted, when he really wanted to get something done, he could do it. Make, no one was stopping him. No one was stopping him. Uh, and he'd get that look and he says, you know, damn, try and stop me. You know, just go, go ahead and try and stop me. But the, he, he just had this intensity about him. And besides, he was so physically fit. It, it, I mean, I'll never forget grabbing his shoulders once and going, oh, my God, LeBron. I mean, this is you know, I'm not a little guy. I'm six, three. You know, I'm a pretty big guy. And he was he is just unbelievably fit. And uh, I know his trainer, Mike Mancia, is a great guy. And, boy, what a team they are together. And uh, I think that was part of his secret. And uh, everyone should learn from that. It was a profession for him. He just wasn't being a ball player. He wanted to be the best ball player. And one of the best ways to be the best ball player is be in great shape, work out, and, and try to get the job done at the highest level. And when he had that attitude, no one was stopping him, believe me. We are talking to the voice of the Miami Heat, Mike Inglis. Mike, last question for me. Chris Bosh is one of the best power forwards we've seen in this league for almost, really, for the last 20 years. Defensively, offensively, he was the backbone of this team with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. He was the piece that really kept, he was the glue that kept them together. Mm -hmm. And the NBA has kept him out of the league because of the situation that he's in. He had the blood clots. Uh, Do you think the NBA is right for keeping him out of the league because he wants to come back and play? Yeah, I, I I think when you when you hear what the doctors all had to say, and you know, I mean, Chris was Chris was phenomenal. Uh, he was so selfless, and still still has the biggest rebound probably in Heat history, kicking that ball out to Ray Allen for that three pointer uh, to send a game into <laughs> overtime and eventually win a championship. But uh, you know what? Uh, everyone is more concerned about his health. Okay, he's got a family, the whole bit. Guys, let's say if you're a pro athlete and you're still you still feel you're pretty healthy. You want to keep it going. And I, I understand that. Everyone understands that. But, again, 
sometimes you need some protection from yourself and you have to get the right information. And uh, no team wants to have a player running down the floor and all of a sudden stop and collapse and die in the middle of the floor. And I think that's uh, that was one thing that uh, probably scared everybody in the NBA. Uh, fortunately now, knock on wood, he seems to be very healthy, living a very good life with a nice young family. And, uh, you know, you, you we're happy for that. And he also got himself a couple of championships, which was really <laughs> nice. But uh, it was a shame to see him have to go out that way. But you know what? It, uh, guess what? He's living a good life. Let's put it that way. Mike, last question for me. Referring to your broadcast career, is there a particular call or moment or game that's most memorable to you? Oh, probably the first championship and uh, – and, uh, you know, the screaming out, there'll be a parade down Biscayne Boulevard, which <laughs> ABC used for, I don't know, about 10 years or whatever on their opening of the finals all the time. And, uh, it, uh, you know, like I said, uh, who, who, I always say to people, who'd expect this guy that was born in Glasgow, Scotland, to uh, been to the White House four different times and uh, have three championship rings and uh, be bra- broadcasting basketball for a living. And a pretty, pretty unusual trip for me. Uh, to, to get uh, to get uh, down the, down this road in the NBA. Mike, why don't you tell all the fans how they can find you all over the social media world? I'm just I, I'm a I'm a Twitter guy. Uh, yeah, that that that's about it uh, for me. Uh, uh, I, I'm not on Facebook or, or do any of that stuff. I'm just on. Uh, I, I heck, I can't even tell you what my handle is to tell you the <laughs> truth. I think it's just I think it's just like Mike Inglis. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike. Yeah, it's, it's at Mike Inglis Heat. That's at M I K E I N G L I S and then heat and, uh, uh, Twitter. I'm not a big guy telling you everything I do for, if I go out to rest and stuff, I'm a bas- <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about basketball. Okay. I'll talk about basketball. I'll talk about the English premier league, uh, soccer or football. Like I call it from uh, back home there or the Scottish league and what have you. I'll, I'll mention a little bit about that or something else that gets in my craw, but, uh, that's about as social as I get. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me you ask don't you a question. You know what I had for dinner tonight. Yeah, why not? Like, what did you have for dinner? Those, <laughs> I always blows me away. Said, Listen, I don't care if you had steak tonight or something, or you went shopping. Well, what I had pizza. That stuff? I had pizza. That's just that's just not me. That's just not me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, who, obviously, you you grew up as a football fan. Who did you root for when you were a kid? I was a uh, well in, in uh, we emigrated to Canada when I was a kid and so I got into the Canadian Football League and the Toronto Argonauts were my team and I wound up broadcasting Winnipeg uh, Blue Bombers games out west and then uh, I was a huge uh, Baltimore Colts fan. I was a Johnny Unitas fan mm-hmm. and uh, you know when I, when I was uh, just a, a little kid and I wound up broadca- I wound up coming to the United States to do the NFL and the NBA, and I got to do the Indianapolis Colts and meet one of my uh, one of my uh, boyhood heroes, Johnny Unitas, uh, who finally made amends with uh, with the Colts after the way they left Baltimore and got a chance to meet him. And uh, that's uh, that's sort of my trip down the memory lane with that and doing hockey and Indy 500 and doing a b- bunch of different things. You know, it's 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 broadcasting. Yep. You know, you got a ball or whatever. Or, <laughs> or you're running, I, I'll, I'll do it. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> well, Mike, if the season does start again, we would love to get you on because I do believe the Miami Miami Heat is going to make the playoffs, and they could absolutely make a run in the in the Eastern Conference because the Eastern Conference, to me, is one of the weakest conferences in professional sports. So, well, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're that weak, but uh, with the likes of. Uh, the folks in Milwaukee and Boston and Toronto, what have you. But I, I think uh, there's no doubt about the playoffs for Miami. And I think they're going to scare the bejeebers out of a lot of teams uh, because this team is very knit team out of all the sports I've done, whether it's been doing the NHL, the NFL, you, you pick a sport. Uh, I've never seen a team closer together, like friends that really are concerned about one another and they all want the same thing. And that's get the win. And they are thrilled when you have success. That doesn't happen with every team. Well, Mike, I, I can't wait until the season actually progresses again because, to me, uh, without sports, we're watching right now, we can't wait for an NFL draft, a virtual NFL draft. <laughs> so when, when you How can't wait about that? something that, if you can't wait to watch a virtual NFL draft, well, then uh, whenever sports starts again, it's, it's like a party. It's like a 4th of July. So, Yeah. <laughs> this should be fun tonight. It really should be. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. My pleasure. Have a great, great, and be safe, okay? You too.